The Society of Jesus, popularly known as the Jesuits, were a flourishing band of men, doing a world of good to the whole world as educators, confessors, missionaries, scientists, retreat directors, you name it. They went wherever the need was the greatest. Popes relied on their learning and good counsel. People fondly called them the schoolmasters of Europe. But come mid-18th century, and tragedy struck. There began to be misunderstandings between the Jesuits and the nobility. Envy, revenge, vested political interests, and arrogance and pride on the part of Jesuits too. Welcome to this short video on one of the most tragic and heroic periods in Jesuit history. 18th century Europe saw the Jesuits witness probably their darkest moment in history. The powerful monarchs and kings were jealous of Jesuit power and influence. For instance, in Portugal, they simply hated the Jesuits for working for the upliftment of the Guranis and other tribes in South America. One of the society's greatest enemies was the Marquis de Pombal.
Meanwhile, there was trouble brewing elsewhere too. The French province had sent a dynamic and enterprising Jesuit, Father Lavalette, to build up a struggling mission in Martinique, a French colony. Over time and despite his noble intentions, this Jesuit got into a terrible tangle with regard to the finances of the place. Statements of account regarding the business transactions here in Martinique. I come with no animosity for the family. I come to know the truth. My only wish is to make a thorough investigation regarding the rumors that has been going on for a few years. I trust that you are an honorable Jesuit and have always had the noblest of intention. And you have made mistakes like we all make mistakes. I wish to help you. And the Society of Jesus in France more than ever needs your cooperation. The French government has cornered us and they have been great father. Are you saying that I am responsible for the government sanctions we now face? Don't you remember that I was sent here at a time this mission was financially in ruins? The consultants gave me a hard blanch, a blank check to build this mission. Yes, but no one permitted you to do this. This mission needed grace. There was no food for people. The houses were in ruins. I had to rebuild them. Foreign trade was needed to support this mission, Father. To support this mission! Your problem is much wider than this mission! Father, the problem is much wider than you think. The debts you incurred here in Martinique have now been approved to the whole province of France. Your exploits here have made the whole province vulnerable. And all the Jesuits are being held responsible. The parliament, the parliament has pronounced a sentence condemning Father General and the whole society to pay Mrs. Leopsi and brothers the sum of 1.5 million liveries plus 50,000 liveries for damages, interests, and expenses. Where this going to come from? <coughs> they have all forgotten about your plunderous business. All those very envious of the society have come to win it to ruin us. The parliament is attacking on our Jesuit constitutions. They have appointed a committee to study Jesuit moral and political doctrines as well. Padre, you must return to France. In a similar manner, and for various other reasons, the Jesuits were expelled from Spain, Parma, and Naples, till finally, on 21st July 1773, the death sentence was passed. 
Pope Clement XIV suppressed the society all over the world. To the brief, Dominus at Redento, for the benefit of the worldwide church, after our mature deliberation, we do out of certain knowledge suppress and abolish the said company for all eternity, annulled and extinguished. The Jesuits were now witnessing the darkest period in history. They were shunted out of their own homes, ill-treated by soldiers, set out in small boats to sail on the waters, not knowing where they were going. They were hungry, tired, sick, dying. Even the Jesuit general was starved in the papal jail. He died a sick and weary man. But all was not lost. There was still a glimmer of hope in faraway Russia. The society was to be kept alive by a woman, a truly dynamic, bold and courageous woman, the Tsarina Catherine of Russia. Even before the division of the Polish Kingdom among Austria, Prussia, and Russia, the Jesuits saw the men with the highest caliber, with the noblest of virtues, and an unwavering faith in God. What they have done for the education in Russia has never never been done before in the annals of our history. My ambition is to uplift Russia through education, through the sciences, through the humanities, through good morals. And nobody, nobody but the Jesuits can make that possible. And I'm quite sure of this. Our willingness to let the Jesuits function in Russia meant the continuance of the society. Our efforts, along with those others like Joseph Penatelli, gradually led to the suppressed Jesuits restarting their ministries of old.
by the will of the Father and the blessings of successive popes. The Society of Jesus continues to live on today in the 21st century, ever striving to do the world a world of good.